Thanks to today's FTC announcement, bloggers will now be required to disclose pay and freebies that they receive in exchange for favorable reviews and testimonials. But what does that mean for the blogosphere? We'll tell you in the loop. Joining me from New York to help us make sense of it all, senior editor for Silicon Alley Insider, Dan Fromer, is here. Dan, how are you? Good. Your last outfit was better, Kevin. You're, you're very welcome. I, I'm completely, that, that gyro was helping me balance. I'm all torn asunder now. I don't know where to go. But, uh, they made me take mine off. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be awkward. We really need to coordinate our Lady Gaga outfits. I'm glad you're not dressed like a peacock is raping you. That's always nice. Um, <laughs> Now, we just heard in the feed that the FTC announced guidelines that they're going to let the agency go after bloggers who may be deceiving their readers. Now, as a blogger, what do you make of this news exactly? Well, you know, this is something that is probably a good thing. At least we're getting towards territory of good thing. It's good that, uh, you know, TV commercials shouldn't be able to show phony stuff. And it's good that bloggers probably shouldn't be able to accept money or free stuff they get to keep and then write a glowing review of it and not have any problems with that. The problem, of course, is the enforcement of all of this. Uh, you know, who knows how many thousands of posts are going to get written, how this is going to be enforced, what sort of uh, disclaimers people are going to have to write, stuff like that. Right, and, and all the coverage so far, it's been centered around tech blogs, because, of course, they're, they're up on announcements like this. But this would cover everything, right? This would cover movie blogs, where, where uh, film critics are flown to exotic locations to see a work print of something, or even cover someone who writes a video game review if they go to a special event. Like, how far-reaching is this? It would affect every type of blog out there, right? And this is precisely the problem, is it's really hard to put a lot of price tags on experiences or services or things like that. And I don't know. Like, this is, this is the big problem, is it's really, really going to be hard to enforce this. And that's why the FTC, if you read some of the later articles that were written today, were basically said they're going to go after advertisers more than bloggers, you know, this big money fine amount. That was the most they could possibly charge someone. They're probably not going to charge people that much stuff. And if they're going after individual bloggers, it's going to be the really egregious ones that kind of make a business out of this, who take a lot of stuff for free, keep it, and write these glowing reviews without saying as much as, by the way, we're getting paid for this. Right. And is there going to be like sort of a, an FTC? rat pack that hangs out in a room crawling Google Reader looking for these posts? I mean, how are they actually going to potentially enforce something like this that could span the entire Internet? Are they just going to rely on people complaining? Precisely. I mean, this, that's the biggest problem is that there's so much stuff that gets written every day. There's really no way to monitor all the new stuff that's out there. What's a review? What's, a, what's positive? What's negative? Um, you know, does it count if you have to send it back? I don't think so. Right. You know, if you think about all the newspaper reviewers, they get free stuff every day. They get really cool free experiences, but they send this stuff back and, and whatever. So uh, it's going to be very hard for them to uh, even see that this stuff is happening. It seems to me like there's going to be a system where maybe if someone complains about it, then they'll do an investigation, then maybe they'll talk to the advertiser and the writer, and then they'll figure out what's sure. next. And, Dan, are the guidelines even clear-cut enough to define what mediums are affected? Because, okay, we get blog, we get somebody writing a blog post, that's fine. But what about somebody who's talking about a new pair of sunglasses that they were sent or, or, or that they bought even on YouTube? Or someone that Twitters, hey, I just saw the screener for this movie, it's amazing. I mean, those are experiences that I don't want to be fine for, you know, not having disclosed because I only have 140 characters. Could that extend out to the people on Twitter? Exactly. I mean, this is, this is an age where everyone is a publisher all the time, all day when they're online. Does it matter if five people read my blog or if 50 people read my Facebook? There's so many variables here that this is a mess. Uh, you know, it seems to me like this is something that's kind of a cover-your-ass move. They're saving it for the most egregious offenders, and that's about it. Right. And, and so, Dan, I guess, I guess the spirit of this is a good thing, right? Uh, full disclosure, everybody knows what's going on. There's no hidden tricks or anything like that. But we worry about enforcement, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, do you feel like this is a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it's, it's great that they're going to try to stop, you know, phony weight loss commercials and stuff like that and make consumers get what they're expecting out of their product from an advertisement. But, you know, to try to regulate the Internet and try to say that, that people uh, have to disclose something here or there or maybe not there, it's a mess. You know, right. it's a mess. It's not going to work. Hey, if these guidelines stop hot singles in my area from wanting to chat with me whenever I'm on my favorite <laughs> websites, then I'm happy because those are never true. And I'm right. never the thousandth exactly. visitor and I never win that iPod. I hate the internet. It sucks. Dan, thank you for keeping us in the loop. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you.